but trust me, it will pick up as we are just about ready to get underway at 6.32 Eastern and not a good start for Poozer. He plunks Gage Miller, so Alabama in business early. 11th time Miller has worn one this year to go along with 50 base hits, so he has done a lot of damage getting on base and, in fact, has been on base in every game so far. And now T.J. McCants transferred in from Ole Miss. Florida native, a senior, and wanted to play infield at Alabama, but Coach Rob Vaughn said, I'm good on infielders. You can play in the outfield if, you, if you'd really like to play for us. He said, ah, okay, and it's worked out. They shift him right with Kentucky shortstop Grant Smith to the second base side of the bag. And boys, James McCoy ever so deep in right field with that wind blowing out a little. That rain still falling a little bit. It was supposed to have got out of here, I think, around 6.30ish. Of course, yeah. it hasn't. Came back and paid us a visit during yeah. warm-ups. This turf ball's gonna be getting to you pretty quick. Got a piece of it. One ball, two strikes. And now a complete shift as Daly runs across the diamond into short right field. There you see the defensive formation, Smith moving back more. They can still get to a double play if the ball cooperates. That one straight up. And you see Walt Schmidt converging. Well, it took forever to come down with the raindrops, and there's one out. Dangerous bat, retired by the Wildcats. Be a lot of help tonight with balls in the air, especially with the wind like it is. How many times have we said the wind usually blows out? From <laughs> I talked to uh, Mr. Flynn about through the evening is how does this ball react coming off the wet turf? Because <laughs> we watched in the warm-ups, Doug, and some throws got away from people. You want my honest opinion or my coach speak? <laughs> Why don't you lay both of them? Oh, well, I'm honest. Ian Petrut's standing in. Well, the good thing about this turf is it does drain extremely well. But still, the ball is, and not only just what the defense is going to handle, but sliding into bases, too. You're going to have to start your slide a little bit early as well. That is hit in the air to short right. There's McCoy. And there are two out. During warm-ups, we saw some throws sailing because the infielders and the outfielders were scooping up wet baseballs. So now Evan Slight, framing a Massachusetts native. Boy, Baruch was from New Jersey. That's a foul ball. They've come south to play in the sunny SEC, and yet they're playing in <laughs> Drizzle tonight. And in fact, Rob Vaughn was telling us yesterday in our conference call, of course, he came here from Maryland first year for the Crimson Tide. We were talking about weather. He said, yeah, I left Maryland to get away from this. Well, we had snow yesterday, That's so today's true. like a, a balmy day. Good 48 pitch. degrees, not bad with that. <laughs> Pooser ran it in on him, and now jumps ahead, no balls, two strikes. Poozer himself a transfer. And he has proven that he's up to pitching in the SEC. Light just stays alive, getting the start tonight in right field. As Doug said, we were supposed to have better weather at First pitch time, wouldn't chase. And the weather's supposed to be better tomorrow. And then again, even better on Sunday. We'll be with you tomorrow, Sunday's game on the SEC Network. One ball, two strikes. Fooled him on that, but he got just enough to stay alive. Booster transferring in from the College of Charleston. 
He is a South Carolina native, a grad student. Again, the one, two. Got him to chase. Booster works out of a minor. You don't feel like that I am in my groove right now. Then you look down on paper and he's hitting 333. So can't wait to see what it's like yeah. when he gets hot. Wouldn't mind a groove like that. Ben has 48 strikeouts, ninth in the conference. And that 210 average by opposing batters, 13th lowest in the SEC. Got to start back on March 29th against South Carolina. No decision. And he pulls the string a little bit on Ryan Walshmit. He's got a good slider, and that's what that looked like that time. And Ryan's been known to be real aggressive up into two strikes with some big swings. Pretty incredible that he tore an ACL in the summer, underwent surgery, opened the year as Kentucky's designated hitter, and finally, about three weeks ago, was allowed to return to playing defense. Good pitch on the inner edge by Hess. Jumps out one and two. Hit hard, but a solid pickup at third base by Gage Miller. And there's one out. Scheduled to play Louisville on Tuesday as he looks at strike one. Tornadic activity in the Commonwealth. Pushed that game to Wednesday and then a terrible forecast forced a cancellation of the game. We don't know if they're going to make that up. Petrie, the Quebec native. Four homers, 36 base hits. Second on the team in doubles with 10. Jams it the other way, and a nice mm. grab by Ian Petrutz. Takes a base hit away from Petrie, but Doug, there you go. He uses the entire ballpark. And yeah, he puts a good away. swing in. It. You know, just a little bit late jump on that one. I don't know if he lost sight of it for a little bit. Maybe it was in a, one of the light poles at one point in time, but it's just real nice to come in on this really goofy day and makes a nice play in left field. Now Devin Burks, the Bradenton, Florida native. Still hasn't totally gotten untracked offensively. With a 250 average, a home run, 16 runs batted in. Starts him off with a breaking pitch. Surprisingly, only five doubles for Burks. He's a guy who loves to shoot the gaps and has the speed to take advantage. Now Devin's still trying to find his comfort zone at the plate. It amazes me, though, those catchers. They got so many other things to think about, <laughs> and then all you got to go up there and try to get a base hit as well. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. Burke's 11 steals tied for second on this team. Leads NCAA catchers, and it's only been caught once. Great breaking ball by Hess to end a perfect first inning. Shared it with Alabama. <laughs> so now Justin LeBron, Miramar, Florida native. The number five hole hitter, just a freshman, and all he's doing is batting 354 and sends McCarthy deep to center, but playable. Almost ran out of room. Mm. LeBron with five home runs on the year. And with that swing, Doug, you can see why. Boy, what a good-looking athlete he is. Came in here. You don't see a lot of freshmen that come into this league and blossom that fast, but certainly you put him in the right situation. We've heard a lot about his defense. At times, got a little bit of his power. Just missed it a hair. Now Cade Snell. That will be on the berm and an easy souvenir. For a youngster. That's why you bring your mitt, right? That's why you bring it. Went down to say hello to Chris Stewart. Didn't realize, but Alabama being in the Final Four. Yeah. Best of luck to the Tide. Yeah. Represent. Wildcats again shift to the right side. 
with Daly, the third baseman in short right field. So big hole left side. Popped it. That's Petrie rushing and two out. What about footing on a night like tonight, Doug? It's not too bad on this turf because it does drain so well. It's, it's not really that bad. The only thing is going to be when you try to stop when you're sliding, you're just going to have to start a little bit earlier. But this field does such a good job of draining that the elements are not going to be a big excuse for this evening. Will Hodo is a third-year player, batting 297. He is from Waynesboro, Massachusetts, so another member of the Tide who came south. They just don't have a weak link in this lineup. No. They got, what, eight players with at least five home runs? Yeah, and they got seven of them hitting 300. <laughs> wow. And Odo just a tick below. Boozer jumps ahead with two outs, one ball, two strikes. And you know when you're scoring those kind of runs like they've been doing in Kentucky as of late, it really lets your pitcher relax a little bit more too, knowing that my team's going to score me some runs so I don't have to be as perfect. and I can throw to some contact instead of trying to strike everybody out. Well, Poozer goes ahead and decides I'll strike this guy out. His second of the night. I know that would be – you haven't been able to get down there I have yet. not. I've been down there many times. As Nick Lopez stands in and it hit him. So he won't get a chance to add to that average of 412, which is fourth in the league, but he'll take it. Didn't even get to talk about his mustache either. No, but we will. All right. And here's the good news about that. It's just a little longer than it was the last time we <laughs> talked about it. Yeah, starting to take some good shape to it. So Hess was very sharp in inning number one, but let one get away. And now we'll see what the Wildcats do with a man on first. Mitchell Daly standing in, and Gage Miller taking no chances. He's already in in front of the cutout at third base. And now you see why. Wildcats not afraid to play the small ball when it suits them, but as Doug mentioned off the top, so many ways to hurt you with this Kentucky offense. And right now, you don't know how tough runs might be to come by tonight. So I feel like the team that jumps out in front may have a little bit of advantage. And it got through Gassette. So now Kentucky may think bunt once again, but nobody out. One thing that this turf will do on a ball like that to the catcher where he probably had it close to block, but the ball scooted underneath his glove. And you almost have to get that glove all the way down on the ground because it won't hop like it normally on a dryer field, but it will scoot. So actually, Matt Gassetti behind the plate. 2-0 and pitch coming up to Daly. And once again, Miller cheating in from third base. There's Nick Mangione, led his team to a regional championship last year, the second in school history. Back in 2017, surprised the league by leading the Wildcats to that regional title. And for his troubles, named Coach of the Year. <laughs> Mentioned that 016 that won the title. Nick was an assistant coach on that team. Interesting situation. Lopez runs well. He'll steal a bag on you. And with Miller playing in at third base, now he backs up a step. But and Kentucky not afraid to steal third. Nope. They will do that on their own. Defensive alignment. Boy, a daily trying to push it right side. Two balls, two strikes. 21 sack bunts on the air for these Wildcats, and you see 68 stolen bags. But boy, they played long ball in their sweep over Georgia. Piled up the runs last weekend in the road sweep of Ole Miss. 
I think maybe the only people expecting that was Kentucky. Mm -hmm. On a breaking ball, Daly punches it up the middle, and Lopez will score. Nice at bat for the Wildcat third baseman, and Kentucky takes a 1 0 lead. You're right, got a breaking ball, pulled off just a little, but boy, kept those hands back so he could still hit it, not with a lot of authority. And he hits it in the perfect spot. Once he got by the pitcher, got on that turf, clear sailing out to center field. So as Doug mentioned earlier, you like to jump out as early as possible on a Friday night, and the Wildcats have done just that. And now a big bat for Kentucky, Ryan Nicholson. Transferred in from Cincinnati, where he had 16 home runs last year, and there you see he doesn't get cheated on his swing. Got off to a little bit of a hot start, then a little bit of a slump, and has worked his way out of it and has provided the Wildcats with a lot of thrills over the last three weeks and plays a solid defense at first. See, I told you that rain would be out of here. Sun's about to come out again or somewhere. I don't remember what that looks like, but I'll take it. No chance at a double play, so Nicholson out at first. And there's one down. And again, Hess changing speeds well. So now with a one out, a man in scoring position for Nolan McCarthy. He's another guy, Doug, who's worked his way back from injury, starting to look like the guy we saw last year. Well, he's a really good outfielder. They had him in right field. He played there a lot this year, center field. They decided to move him over. And he's played a great center field because he has that really good speed, good jumps on balls, but had a good series at Ole Miss as well. Three home runs. He's driven in 19. Nolan had that terrific performance in the Lexington Regional last year, made the all-regional team. Homer in back-to-back -back elimination games. Runner goes. And Gassetti just couldn't make the exchange. So Daly now at third base with one out and a bigger opportunity for McCarthy. Daly now with five steals in six attempts. Well, you know, McCarthy took that pitch, too, all the way to give his guy a chance to get the third, but he put himself in a hole now, 0-2. All he needs to do is try to put the ball in play. But mm. goes down on three pitches. Hess comes back with a big strikeout, two down. Well, that was a good fastball, wasn't it? Just down in the bottom of the zone. I mean, a little bit extra oh. on it right there. Man. So now James McCoy. Right fielder, also a Kentucky pitcher. Three home runs on the year. He's got his average up to 304. A switch hitter. Well, James is a guy that can hurt you in every way. Hit the opposite way, can leave the yard. He's got some speed. If you need an inning in relief, he can do that. Yep. Got a big out from the mound down in Oxford. I was listening to that game on the radio, and they said, McCoy will come in to pitch. And I thought, <laughs> all right, I'm not sure I know. They only got one McCoy. <laughs> but he came in throwing strikes. Oh, yeah. Wildcats in good shape when they score first. And again, changing speeds, Doug. And he's done that on just about every hitter. McCoy with a three for four afternoon last Sunday in the 15 to one win over Ole Miss. Ooh. 93 miles an hour, tried to sneak it under his hands. Ball looked like it cut a little bit, almost got away from Gassette. Kentucky piled up 37 runs in Oxford. 
Usually you're happy to get out of town. They enjoyed themselves down at Ole Miss. Two balls, two strikes. I think one of the things that was when you played down there this weekend, they took the crowd out of the game. Yes. Every time that they, Ole Miss would make some kind of run, then they would come right back and score and took them out, out of the game. Friday night was a seat of your pants kind of game. Five to three win for the Wildcats and 17 to nine, 15 to one. Another breaking ball, but they've got it played perfectly. And Grant throws him out. So the Wildcats take a man all the way to third base, but that's where he found his way to Lexington through the portal, making his third start. Picked up the win last week on Friday against Ole Miss. Went five and two thirds, gave up just two earned runs. Walked only one, struck out five. Matt Cassetti at the plate. One thing you like about Pooser, I know you like about him, Doug, works quickly. He works quickly. You know, he's got a lot of poise. Doesn't seem to get rattled too much. 2-0 pitch. Cassetti pulled the trigger. And the ball kind of gets on you a little bit. You know, it stays right in that 90 mile an hour range, but it can get on you. We just saw that pitch, 2 an old pitch. Now three balls, one strike. Gassetti looking for his first home run. Does have 21 hits. Jammed him. Walt Schmidt has stepped back. Now all the way in to squeeze it. And there's one out. Well, you know, Gassetti calls his own game behind the plate. How often do you hear that? Uh, very rarely in a college game. Yeah. So now Max Grant. There's a one out, base is empty. Senior batting 300, making just his fourth start. Three for 10 on the year. Easy play for Nicholson. Pooser covering two out. Fundamental baseball. Just the way you draw it up. Little PFP that they work on every single day. Every day. Alabama suddenly needed a head coach last year, and he was more than happy to cast his lot in the SEC. Loved his stay in Maryland, he said. He and his wife just loved it there, but a chance to coach in this league. Top of the order, Gage Miller hit by a pitch. He's been the only base runner so far for the Crimson Tide. As you can see by his numbers, you got to be careful. Gage with eight doubles, couple of triples to go with those home runs, and he has kept that streak alive of reaching in every game. And one of the best hitters in Division I baseball. Had a lot of fun against Samford. Didn't get cheated on that swing. And a tough play for Grant Smith way out in short left field. Come on, took, Ryan. <laughs> you got to be hollering for your boy. Get in here. Took command and made the play. No score in Lexington. But now that everybody's healthy defensively, it's made a big difference. When you and I both know he was ready to come back, oh. but they took a little extra time with him. Oh, oh, he you. lobbied. <laughs> he lobbied. Coach, I'm ready. No, you're not. And, you know, he might have felt ready. No swing. Yeah. But he knew that this team, he wanted to be a part of something yes. special. He yeah. wanted to back in the lineup. And I'm sitting here looking at those uniforms, and other than the fact that they look too much like the Dodgers, <laughs> those are good-looking <laughs> uniforms. One ball, one strike. Ooh, good breaking ball. Hmm. Grant Smith, a finalist for the Golden Glove last year. Should have won it. Agreed. Not to take anything away, but we saw him every day, and he yep. was spectacular. Great pitch by Hess, 91, up and in. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, he's got just a nice, smooth delivery, doesn't he? That's big if you're 6'5". 
Man, right back upstairs, he yep. just went up the ladder. Third strikeout for Hess. Now the Wildcats turn it over. Walt Schmidt, the leadoff man, grounded to third. His first time up. Fastball with a little movement up in that position right there, really tough to catch up to. Walt Schmidt, second on the team and runs scored. Pulled the string that time. Standing in the on-deck circle, he sees back-to-back -back fastballs at 91-92. Steps into the box and sees 76. <laughs> That'll mess with somebody's mind. Yeah, he throws a couple of different breaking balls. Looks like throws a slider, and then he throws a curveball. And he got that good fastball. Mentioned Walt Schmidt working his way back from the knees. Had a couple of nagging injuries this year, starting just his 22nd game. Mm. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Somehow caught the corner. One ball, two strikes. Walt Schmidt, a Bradenton, Florida native. Now you see really good at getting on base. See the run on that fastball right there. Pitch before a breaking ball looked like it may have backed up a little bit. Pitcher really doesn't know when that's going to happen, but just doesn't break as much as you think it's going to break. Got the same spin on it, but just doesn't break as much. Big, big bender, and it fools Walshman. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, two out. Well, look at the break on this ball. That's just wow. You know what they used to call that in the old days? That was a drop. <laughs> now well, they call it, it a slur. Well, it did drop. But it, was, it did. It's just really, really a nice pitch. There it is again. Emilian Petrie flowed, flowed, flew out to left field back in the first inning. Came to Kentucky as a shortstop, one of the better shortstops in all of Canada at his age level. But played behind an All-American, Ryan Ritter. And then last year, Grant Smith transferred in from Incarnate Word, so that made Petrie a second baseman. Well, that didn't miss by much. No, it didn't. And now, as Nick Mingione pointed out, with Daly, who was a shortstop at Texas, you got three shortstops in your infield. Goes the other way, but foul. But what kind of a luxury for a coach? And you played both positions in the majors to have three infielders. If you played short, short stops. Chances are, if you played short, you could play the other ones. It's. But if you're just a second baseman and have to move, or a third baseman and have to move to shortstop, it's a little bit tougher. But these kids are all good athletes, and they look very comfortable everywhere they put them. Froze him with the breaking ball. What an inning by Hess. How are you doing? Uh, typical SEC Friday, is it not? You got a couple guys arm wrestling out there. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a good one, man. Uh, two guys on the mound just duking it out and uh, making it hard on offenses, that's for sure. All right, Coach, this guy's got, a, got some good stuff tonight. What are you telling your hitter second time through? Now he's throwing a ton of all speed. I mean, it's a, it's crazy that I think he's only thrown three or four fastballs. <laughs> he is just loving his curveball and his little cutter slide. So we got to make an adjustment. Coach, tell me real quickly, just about you were talking this week about the attitude of this team. They love playing together, and, and there's a lot of fight in your ball club. Yeah, they do, and um, they have a good time too. Not only are they uber competitive, but they're having fun while they're competing, and you guys know how important that is. We play college baseball, man. Like, this is the best years of their life, and uh, this is a group that really does love and care for each other and fun to be around. How's the dugout looking? They've left you alone during this interview. Yeah, they're doing good. <laughs> they're locked in. I know that. They're probably making fun of me behind my back or something. I don't know. Hey, Nick, you kind of set the tone. This looks like one of those early practices you all had. The guys were eating it up. Couldn't wait to get on the field and play. Yeah, you know what? That's one thing that we embrace, whether it's rain, wind, cooler temperatures, it doesn't matter. Um, we just want to play. We love being around each other, competing at the highest level. Thanks, Coach. Get back to work. Good luck. Yeah, thank you, guys. That's Nick Mengione, and he watches his pitcher, Pooser, bring up another strikeout. 
boy, both pitchers are really on their game tonight, which is what you'd expect on a Friday night. That's number three for Booser. And again, McCants, they keep him at bay. One of the more dangerous hitters in the Southeastern Conference. Has it always been that way in this conference? It seems like it has, where there's such a premium on that Friday night pitcher. Oh, yeah. I mean, has it been like that forever and ever and ever? Seems like it. I mean, I know you go back to like Abner Doubleday or whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a ball boy for his team? <laughs> Ian Petrutz, a New Jersey native. He's going to have to wait because Devin Burks wants to have a word with Trey Pooser, who's gone to 2-0. and oh. Yet the first batter he faced and has since not let anybody on base. Now you see the breakdown. A little smile from <laughs> I was him. Say, yeah, that was quite I the grin. <laughs> we may want to, or we may not want to know what he said to him. Infield way back for Petrutz. But now 3 0. Petrie in short right field. Smith's got his feet in the outfield. Nicholson deep at first with a left-handed hitter. 92 miles an hour, just made it look easy. But a hitter's count now for the 339 hitter. Did he? Nope. So another base runner for the Crimson Tide, their first since the first inning. And first walk of the game surrendered by Pusser. He's walked only nine now on the year against 30 strikeouts. So now Evan Slight, he struck out his last time up. That ended the first inning. You know, we've talked about the temperature here. It is, it is chilly, and of course that could be a home field advantage for the Wildcats. 45 degrees and cloudy. I remember it opening up, though, in Montreal, and they would say, this is an advantage for you. Really? We just left Florida, too. How's that an advantage? <laughs> Spring training. Yeah. Well, but I would tell you this, that Rob Vaughn told us that many of his, I'll say several of his players, invested in what he called scuba suits. <laughs> that they're wearing under the uniform. I got to think it's not a full wetsuit. I don't know that I've heard of that before. I have not either. Then you have wow. Gage Miller who came out in short sleeves. Yeah. So <laughs> in warm-ups. Yeah. Well, he's out short sleeve now. Well, he is, yeah. yeah. No balls, two strikes. Change speeds on him. Nicholson uh -oh. gets the lead runner. Clean hop for Grant Smith. And there are two outs. <laughs> Grant Smith sort of gave a look over to Nicholson like, really? <laughs> I mean, you're going to short hop it from there? And Grant does the right thing, just stays with an elegant look. <laughs> kind of an awkward throw oh. by Nicholson. So on the force play, two down for Justin LeBron. Was in the eight or nine hole early in the year. Nice pickup by Burks because he has been hitting so well. Hitting 350 with five homers. He has forced Rob Vaughn to move him up in the lineup. And Vaughn's like, oh, that's okay with me. Yeah, he gave it a ride last time up. Took McCarthy all the way back to the warning track. Rob said LeBron it might be the best hitter in his lineup at making adjustments mid at bat. So now he's caught up with Pooser already. We'll see what he does here. Kind of got some Ryan Ritter size to him, too. Goes the other way. And that's base hit number one. Runner's going to move to third so that they're corners now for Alabama with two outs. So LeBron goes the other way.
Fastball. He stays right on top of it. Boy, just a nice swing. A little inside. McCoy making sure. It looked like bobbled it a little bit. Making sure you keep that ball in front of you. Devin Burks flashing defensive signals. But Cade Snell making his way to the plate. The Dothan, Alabama native. Actually began his career at Auburn. Jammed him. McCarthy and Waldschmidt, they talk about it. McCarthy says, I'll take it, and he does. Alabama threatens but leaves him on the corners. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Devin Burks with one bomb so far this year. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the, this ballpark. You're not going to hit a lot, especially gap to gap. Burks on Saturday against Ole Miss, two for four, drove in three. Three multi-hit games on the year, including the season opener down at USC Upstate. Two for five at a home run. Ben Hess has struck out three straight Wildcats. Struck out the side back in the third inning. Mm, it's just a well-located fastball right there. I'm looking, how's his ERA 5.59? Five, five, That's a good question. Fooled Burks. Four straight strikeouts. And there's one down. He's only given up one hit and that one run. S this year went five innings against Indiana, struck out 10 Hoosiers. And it was the third time he struck out 10 in one game so far. Well on his way tonight. Now Nick Lopez hit by a pitch his last time up. He scored the game's only run. Transfer from Southern Cal, switch hitter. Ball's behind 0-2, and, and now a shift by the Crimson Tide. Now you see how he likes to spray it around. Really finds the gaps wherever he's hitting. And a glorious mustache. <laughs> glorious. Wow. Yes, had the right idea with the lefty, trying to run it down and in at 93. Fooled him with another big slow curve. Five straight strikeouts. I'm telling you, that thing is nasty. Yes, has got it going. Boy tries to hold back, and then he'd already overcommitted. That's just nasty, nasty. What do you think? That thing drop about three feet? I think I'm glad I'm sitting up here. <laughs> Georgia got to him for five runs in four innings. Mitchell Daly delivered an RBI single, knocked one right back up the middle his last time up. Bama played in the Frisco Classic all Tournament, and he made the all-tournament team, did Hess. Went four innings against Valparaiso and got his second win on the year. Struck out five. And in fact, Hess was Alabama's opening day pitcher this year. Four scoreless innings against Manhattan. One hit, two walks, nine strikeouts. I could see that. Two two pitch. End of the bat on the move is McCants. That's going to drop. Boy, Mitchell Daly's been a thorn in the side of Ben Hess tonight, his second hit. 
There's another breaking ball that he hits off the end of the bat, but he stays in there long enough just to make contact. Something that the other Wildcats have had trouble doing. <laughs> and if they're paying attention, obviously that's what you need to do, at least right now against Ben Hess, just hang in there, especially against that breaking ball. But And when you start looking for that breaking ball, Doug, he'll bust you at 93. Well, they always say look for the fastball and adjust to the breaking ball, but that's a really good. That's one of those Burt Bly 11 breaking balls. Ryan Nicholson grounded the second his last time up. They shift him slightly to the right with two outs. Runner goes. And Daly is safe. Second steal of the night. It's hard to, make, hard to make that tag when the ball's in the dirt because you got to take your glove down low, and the first thing you do is keep your glove down, you bring it up, and it looks like first advantage, he slid under. Ball's down, goes up, looks like he's in there. Well, it's just a nice pick at shortstop. Did you notice how he let that ball travel too? You know, that's one of my pet peeves as an infielder, but he was up in front of the bag. Second base, the call on the field is safe. This call is on the further review. So Joseph Smith making the announcement. First base umpire, Clint Fagan behind the plate. Averro January is at second. Tyler Simpson at third. Take another look. You be the judge. Ball's up. You know, I think if he slaps it on the front of his foot, he's got him, but the ball was a little bit behind him, so I don't think there's enough to overturn it. You see Daly aiming for the outside. <laughs> I'll take that chuckle as a denial. All right, the call at second base will be overturned. Whoa! And Daly, now you see him his first challenge. protesting the call. I guess they said he didn't pull it off. <laughs> and now Nick Menji. There's pick. so many poles out there. They really are. So now Will Hodo. Struck out to end the second inning. There would have been more of a buzz in the crowd if the crowd had been a little bigger after that call, but Hodo sends it into deep left center. They're going to have to play that off the wall. Waldschmidt brings it back in. But that's a leadoff double for Alabama's Will Hodo and the tied in business here in the top of the fifth inning of a one nothing game. Double number six, and he went down and got that one. Yeah, he sure did. Looked like maybe something a little off speed. Got it over the middle of the plate, and boy, he deposited. Ball hit very good to left center field gap. And you know, both Waldschmidt and McCarthy, you've talked about their speed, and that ball hung up, but he hit it so hard, they never had a chance. So now Mac Cassetti with an opportunity to tie this game. He's going to try to move the runner. Daly makes the only play he has, and there's one out. Well, yes, your catcher to come in there and lay down a bunt. He does it perfectly. So now a runner on third for the second time tonight for Alabama. Max Grant. Well, just try to find something he can drive to the outfield or pull to the right side of the infield. Middle infield is deep. Going to squeeze it. Only one play. Well done by the Tide. Fundamental baseball. And it's Alabama playing small ball to tie the game at one. Well, that was very, very nicely done. Say runs are hard to get tonight, so they're going to try to get one any way they can. You got the infield back. Well, he does a good job of deading it. Runner gets a good break from third base, and we got a tie ball game. Poozer thought about it, didn't he? Yeah, he thought about it for a second, but he made the right play. I got to think that the infield was yelling, get one. Gage Miller now with two down. Base is empty. Well, you've pointed out before, so many times guys get excited and bunted right back to the pitcher. 
Big hop for Daly. Corner to corner. And that'll do it, but very quickly, Alabama gets a leadoff double. Uh, two bunts after that double. You got to be proud of what you just saw. No, it was just, I mean, really good at bat by Hodo starting off that inning. I mean, gets inside a good changeup and, and hits it, hits us a double start out, and then two guys just execute. You know, we haven't done a whole lot of that this year because we've really slugged the baseball pretty good, but day like today, man, it's cold. The ball ain't jumping too good, so, so we got to do what we got to do, and those guys did their job at the bottom, which is huge. Rob Ben Hess, this is Doug Flynn. He what a great, he looks awfully good. Is that breaking ball been that good all year? Yeah, you know, he's got a really good feel for it today, and that's, that's kind of rare on a cold day like this yeah. to have a feel for that breaking pitch, and, and he has. He's, he's mixing both of them in today, and I think that's what's been effective. The curveball's been good for him, and slider's hard, short, and he's used them both today, and, man, Ben's been great. He, he's competed his tail off for us today and, and, and gave us a chance because, man, Poozer's good right there executing pitches, and, and Ben's matched them thus far, and we need a good shutdown any of them right here. Coach, before we let you go, how many guys are wearing scuba suits under the uniforms? <laughs> <laughs> Just our two base coaches, man. The, the boys from the north. The boys from the north, we know how to do this thing, man. This feels like Big Ten weather right here, so we're, we're right back home. Thanks, Coach. Uh, thanks, good luck Rob. to you. Thanks, boys. Just a base. Well, they're out there. They can't move around and, and get warm. So I, you know, I can understand that. Yeah. Like I say, I had not heard of that before. No, that's smart. He's Ryan smart. Nicholson did Ooh. not get charged with a swinging strike there. Two balls, no strikes. He was at the plate when the inning ended on the surprising overturn of the stolen base attempt by Daly. Drop that over the outer edge. And why not? You're down 2-0. You come back with an off-speed pitch. And, an, and in a good position, too. Yep. And then a fastball on the inside corner. I'll tell you, this, this young man pitching tonight. With a capital P. It's like he said, on a night like tonight, oh. you think he wouldn't have that good a feel maybe for his breaking ball, but that has certainly been nasty. Wow. Shift is on. They tried to find that inner edge again. Alabama dugout loved it, but... Three balls, two strikes. What do you think, breaking ball or fast? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> breaking ball. Mm. Look around the plate. Wildcats put the leadoff man aboard. Wow. I mean, you can tell the confidence he's got with it. Ball just a little bit outside. He said he tries to frame it just a hair. He'll let you know if it's right on the plate. He wouldn't have moved that glove at all. But just the fact that he's got that much command of it going on tonight, making him so hard to hit. 17th walk of the season for Hess. And now Nolan McCarthy in a tie game. Gage Miller cheating in from third. McCarthy, all kinds of speed and a good bunner, but so far shown no signs of it. Struck out his last time up. Another good pitch under the hands. He, it's got him with a couple of fastballs and then the breaking ball. So if you're up there hitting now, you're knowing that he's got control of every one of these pitches. So it's, at some point in time, you got to pick one of them out. McCarthy thought he had that one measured, but McCants measures it himself. And there's one out. One of the most surprising elements of this game, the elements, and by that I mean there's not a lot of wind. There was a lot of it leading up to the game. I mean, it was blowing out violently to right field during batting practice. Just a little bit of wind, as you can see. And now James McCoy, the switch hitter standing in a left-handed box. Bounced out to second his last time up. James, a red shirt sophomore from Port St. Joe, Florida. Closed out one of the wins over Ole Miss. His bat has come alive of late. And another wild pitch second of the night for Ben Hess. You know, sometimes that ball has a lot of run on it, and that's what that one had right there. That one may have, he may have overthrown that just a hair. I'm no expert, but Coach Keith Madison, who has worked on radio side many nights with our buddy Darren Hedrick, 
visiting the grandkids tonight, so if he's watching Coach Texas, let us know what you think. Like I said, he tried to help frame the plate there, but three balls, no strikes. And a big opportunity for the Wildcats here with one out in a tie game. You know, we've talked about Hess, but also still amazing me and Gassetti's been calling this whole game. And they've both been on the same page most of the night. But now another walk delivered by Hess. Well, he hasn't made too many mistakes when it comes to the Wildcats getting base hits. Two of them, both by Daly. Yep, both that's off it. the end of the bat a little bit. That's right, and that's it. So after his second walk, Grant Smith, and here comes a mound visit by Alabama. 11.7 scholarships. Now Grant Smith. Nice stop by Gassetti. Grant struck out to lead off the third inning. One of five straight strikeouts by Hess. Smith is driven in 17. Making his 20th start. Grant appeared as a pinch hitter or late defensive player in a couple games. Want to make sure that leg was just right. You know, he didn't miss many pitches down the middle of the plate either. One ball, one strike. Sends it the other way. Slight That's on trouble. the move. That's going to drop fair ball. That'll score one, maybe more. Here comes the throw to second. They're going to hold McCoy at third base and a double for Grant Smith. And again, Doug, kind of an end of the bat blooper. But it's a line drive in the box score, and the Wildcats take a 2-1 to one lead. Well, they haven't really squared up very many balls. You can see that's out on the very end of the bat. The old, what the old saying, hit them where they ain't. Boy, that thing just drifted down the right field line. Runners move up, and that was a good pitch. Sometimes you tip your hat and you go, my goodness. And a good piece of hitting by Grant Smith, and now an offensive timeout. There's the Kentucky shortstop with a big grin on his face, and why not? You know, the fact that he stayed in on that ball, though, too. Yes. He wasn't pulling off. He pulls off, he's not going to make contact. Exactly. But he stayed in and was able just to get enough of it down the right field That's line. That's an educated at-bat. And so now, big opportunity for Kentucky on a night when opportunities have been scarce. So the Kentucky coaching staff and the Wildcat hitter and base runners with a little strategery from Nick Mingione. You know, Dick, that breaking ball's been so good for Hess, I had to go over to Roger Hoover and ask him, is, I'm not missing anything. Is that a split or is that a, a, just a good curveball? He said, pretty good, huh? And I said, yeah, you think? Yeah. Alabama radio announcer tonight working solo because our buddy Chris Stewart's working the Final Four. Another good mm. pitch on the inner edge. I think Ryan would like to have that one back. Oh, yeah. Crimson Tide making it all the way. An underdog tonight, but fully capable of pulling an upset. Slash play was on, and Altschmidt got a piece of it. Well, defensively, they got second oh. baseman's halfway. They're in tight on the corners, and the shortstop's playing regular position. So ground ball to short, you could get a run. And now second base has moved back. Yep, that was a perfect time for a slash. No balls, two strikes. When McCoy broke from third, he thought that pitch might have gotten past Gassetti. Ryan Walschmidt's driven in 13 this year. 0 for 2 on the night. Strike out, ground ball. Throws him with a big bender. Eight strikeouts for Ben Hess. Two out.
gave up on it. Boy, that's a, that's just a big breaking ball. And not much argument from Ryan. So now Amelia and Petrie also 0 for 2, caught looking his last time up. Petrie, one of the most disciplined hitters, really, in the SEC. We lined out the first time to left field, then hit one almost down the left field line second time before striking out. So he's hit probably the hardest two balls. Jumps ahead, 2-0. and oh. And this, I'd be surprised if they didn't try to pitch around him a little bit. You got to think he's been. And I believe that's that might be what they're going to talk about. You got yeah. Devin Burks, who you struck out twice already on deck. One of the hottest hitters on Kentucky's team, Petrie. They Missed with a breaking ball. But again, interesting 2-0, and oh, and he comes right back with it. Why not? Uh, we'll see what this one is. Well, this will let you know. Because I'd be, I'd say, look, fastball. If you get it, go get it. Missed. Well, it was indeed a fastball. And he has walked them full. Two walks and an RBI double. Well, we've talked about Devin Burks. Trying to get it going. You'd like to see Devin try to hit this ball gap to gap. And we know he can do it. We've seen him go oppo before. Not try to pull it. Get you a pitch that you like and just try to hit it gap to gap. Two out. Right up the middle. He hung one. And Devin Burks delivers a two run single. And the Wildcats with a crooked number. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And they lead it four to one. Well, that was a pretty swing. We'll look at it again and see if was it a fastball. No, it's a breaking ball. It just kind of hangs up. And he's made a lot of good pitches tonight. That one was not one of his better ones, and Devin takes advantage of it. S has been super up to this point, but Wildcats came up with some kryptonite. And now Nick Lopez, he's got him at first and second two out. Petrie is a threat to go, and you would not expect someone to try to steal with two outs, steal third base, but Kentucky has done a lot of that this year, creating chaos on the base pass, as Nick Mangione says. Lopez, a disciplined hitter at the plate. Hit by a pitch, scored Kentucky's first run, struck out his last time up. Batting 408. Fourth in the conference. Good pitch on the outer edge. Lopez started his career at Illinois Chicago and transferred to a junior college in California. Played for the Trojans for a year. Hold him on that. Interesting, as we've talked about before, that he wants to switch hit. He wanted to. He came here. He's hitting 400 switch hitting, but he wasn't allowed to do that last year. I assume one of the reasons why he left. And you see it, Southern Cal, not, his numbers were not bad. But, boy, he hit the ground making contact here in Lexington. Lopez, the DH tonight, has also spent time at third base and first base. You know, part of that move before we got Walt Smith back in the lineup and had a lot of guys playing different positions early part of the year. Yep. Just trying to figure things out. Just like everybody, like you said at the beginning, everybody across the country. Yeah. Trying to figure out what they've got, where to play them. Fold him. Mm. That'll stay in the infield with two outs, and that'll do it. But Wildcats do some major damage. They hang up three. Miss, he's a different guy in a, in a Crimson Tide uniform. Yeah, he really is, and he's comfortable out in the outfield now. He knows that's where his position's going to be. 
He's got some thunder in front of him and behind him, too, and it's so contagious. You start hitting like that, and then everybody in the lineup does. But, you know, he just looks too athletic not to be doing well. Wildcats have held him at bay so far. A fly ball to left, a strikeout. Mm. Pitch by Pusser. Twelve doubles for this young man to go with those 12 home runs. Second in the league, 26 in the country. One, two. Oh! Petrie broke the wrong way. They had him played properly with a shift on. That one may have just kind of had a little bend to it. Well, it looked like he was moving. That ball hooked back at yes. him. Yeah, if he stood still, it had been right to him. But that ball must have had a little hook on it. It was hit so well. So McCants finally breaks through for a base hit. They hold him to the single. So the leadoff man reaches for the Crimson Tide. The last time that happened, back in the fifth. When Hodo doubled, came around to score. But that game was 1-0 back then. It's 4-1 to one Kentucky right now. Is And Petrutz sends one to right. McCoy knocks it down. First and second, nobody out. So Bama needing to answer, and it has. Well, it's been a while since we had a two to one or three to one ball game around here. Now, now Evan Slight struck out, bounced into a force play. Wildcat infield would love a double play. Three oh five average, five homers for slight. Wind is picked up now, blowing out the right field. Tees off on that one, but Waldschmidt tracking. Runner tags but holds. Boy, good job of Waldschmidt to get the ball back in too. Wind just started blowing the other way, but that ball was hit right on the button. That's three balls they've hit right on the nose now. Three consecutive balls. Now Justin LeBron, he owns a base hit, one for two. Singled back in the fourth inning. Earlier this year in an eight-game hitting streak in SEC play. Uh -oh. And Devin Burks needs a new gizmo. Justin had a three for five day on Wednesday. Scored a couple of runs against Samford. Hey, do they have those for offense and defense, those little watches? They do indeed. How about that? 356 average now. Was that the bat or the bone? I believe that was the bat. Yep. I believe if it had hit him on the bone. you got to do a better job of letting him know. That's jumping right. up and down, yeah. That's a tough break right there. Right on the knob. Him. Oh, man. Mm. That was off Devin Burks. Boy, when you grow up, you just got to be something different about you. And you say, you know, I want to be a catcher. I want to take balls off the mask and off my arm and leg and other places. And hunker down for two hours. Yeah. No balls, two strikes. Came inside with a breaking ball. Both of my brothers were catchers. I just, I just couldn't. I just, I'm like, you know, and I, I, I did it a couple times and I kind of enjoyed it. But like you said, Foul balls and oh. fouls off the mask and hunkering down that long. I used to warm up pitchers when I first started up there, but I didn't like it then either. <laughs> I wasn't even a game. You did that when you were with the Reds? Yeah. Why didn't Bill Plummer do it? Well, he was the backup catcher, so they'd had 
well, what was I going to do all day for a couple of years? So <laughs> we'd go warm up pitchers. And then if you won, you had to warm up the pitcher the next day. Oh, so if you went course. on any winning streaks, of that course. was kind of fun. Of course. Again, the 0-2. You guys, and I mean you ball players, mm -hmm. are the most superstitious in all of sports. I'm convinced. And I won't argue with that. <laughs> That's bad luck. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Off the fist. Trouble. Daily one play. Nice throw. Very nice. That ball looked like it had some spin on it. It bounced back away from him. That's that athletic ability for that former shortstop playing the third base now. Did a good job with that ball. Watch the spin this little ball takes. He's coming in. Whoa, the ball bounces back towards the line. Goes across his body, gets it, then a little sidearm throw, say, makes it look easy. Across his body, on the run, and throws a strike to Nicholson. Got a big opportunity here with two men on in scoring position. You know, you got a couple of outs here now, but you can't let up if you're Poozer. Because just one swing in the back, and they're right back in it. Well, especially against a 341 hitter. Ninety-one miles an hour at the bottom of the strike yeah. zone. One ball, one strike. Boy, and his both he and Hess both have that little extra giddy up sometimes with the ball a little late life, it looks like. Snell the starting pitcher on Wednesday against Sanford. Walt Schmidt on the run. Makes the grab to end the inning, and Alabama leaves two and scoring. Wildcats trying to extend their lead. They're up 4-1. Here at Kentucky Proud Park, and Daly puts the defense in motion, takes strike one. Daly singled twice so far tonight, an RBI, and was involved in a controversial play that ended the fourth inning. He stole second, or so we thought. In fact, was called safe on review, was called out. Because he pulled his foot off the bag, or more accurately, he believed the shortstop in applying the tag had pulled Daly's foot off the bag. Umpires disagreed. Good breaking ball. So Daly charged with a caught stealing for just the second time this year. And in his mind, there's an asterisk on it. They broke through for three runs against Ben Hess. Back in the fifth inning, he was cruising up until that point. Had given up just the one run and the one hit. And a walk to Daly to open the sixth inning. And that's how the fifth inning began for the Wildcats. And as I often say, that's how rallies are born. You walk that first man. Walk Nicholson to open the fifth. He came all the way around. One of three hitters that has walked back in the fifth. You know, Mitchell Daly seems to be seeing the ball maybe a little better than everybody else, too. A lot of his friends and family came to see him play in Round Rock when the Wildcats played in a round robin down there. As Ryan Nicholson stands in, he walked, came around to score. Also bounced out to second. They ignore the shift this time for Nicholson with a double play situation in the offing. And now Gassetti's going to go have a chat. Get close to that 100 pitch mark. Yep. 93 so far. Boy, I love this. Catcher out there, pretty much controlling the whole conversation. A little encouragement to the big guy. And again, Cassetti calling every pitch. We may have seen that this year, but I don't remember hearing about it. I don't either. What 
an advantage, though, for a first-year head coach to inherit a guy like Assetti. Nicholson taking all the way, 2-0. Well, they love playing for him, too. They say they love his energy. And the success he's had before he even got here, certainly carrying over. Well, the Internet being what it is, I guarantee you every one of these players knew everything there was that they could find on the Internet about, <laughs> about their new head coach before the wheels touched down on his Good plane. Point. Now the shift is on. Came back with smoke, but it was too high. And it's 3-2. Now a right-hander loosening. Won't you be Alabama. surprised if they don't send Daly on this pitch? Oh, uh, yeah, not too surprised. Four out of five on the year. Well, now four or six, technically. Four or six, yeah. yeah. With that asterisk. With the <laughs> And not taken away from Cassetti. He made a nice throw. And LeBron made a nice catch. Let yeah. the ball travel, like you said. And Hess thinking along your lines, Coach. Yep. We have 3-2. and Figure if he gets a good jump on a breaking ball, it's going to be hard for him throwing out. You're hoping your hitter may be sitting on the heater. Got him up and yeah. in. One out. Well, it's a tough pitch to lay off of right up under the hands. Against a right-hander. No little for two, a fly ball, a strikeout. Crimson Tide took the series against Tennessee, and this young man played a key role, went three scoreless innings on March 17th against the Vols. Gave up just one hit, a walk, struck out two. McCarthy, 259, three homers. <laughs> they have not yet changed that rule in college baseball, no. and I hope they don't. Yeah, I'm times, with you. How many times you can throw over? Not, not a great lead for Daly. That is right up over our head. And again, people need to remember, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you throw over not so much. If you can pick them off, pick them off, but you just don't want that good jump. And he's got a really big lead, too. It looked like a one-way lead there for a while where he's got to cut it down of late. Cut it down, which means he may be thinking about going. And you know, if you just cut one step away from the base runner at first, maybe he can't go from first to third on a base hit. And, and you remember those days where – a pitcher would come in, they'd say it takes a long time to throw the ball to the plate. You know, you don't see a lot of that anymore because he's, oh, hit and run. Foul ground will do it again. Because these pitchers are so well schooled now that they have that little slide step. They're quicker to the plate. And they've just been taught better to do that. Like a little hit and run there. I've seen just about everything tonight. See you. We saw a slash attempt. That's what Nick says. Squeeze you know, squeeze we'll bunt, safety bunt. Try to take advantage of every single thing we can. Yeah. I think wow. the, the thing that impresses me the most about this club is they're having fun. You know, they're yeah. enjoying playing baseball. Winning, winning's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Hammer. golly! Absolutely crushed. <laughs> Over the bullpen, and a clean catch by a fan. And the Wildcats get a big blue bomb, a no doubter from Nolan McCarthy. A two run shot to make it six to one. My goodness. You can't add a whole lot to that. This ball is destroyed. Looked like a hanging breaking ball. And Nolan just unloads on it. 
Oh, my goodness. Braylon so, Myers. Everybody knows it. The bench knows it. Nolan knows it. With all due respect, had to know as soon as he, as soon as he let go of that pitch. Uh-oh. And a great all-star caliber catch by a fan pretty close to Doug Flynn's car. Now James McCoy. I think I parked right next to you tonight. <laughs> Uh-oh. You, which one are you in? The one with a dent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to show you that catch again here in a minute. James McCoy. Here we go. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Needs Barehanded. To get a... Barehanded. Nice. Do you get a contract or anything anymore? We'll sign him up. Remember how they used to give contracts yeah. in the stands yeah. and stuff? So, uh, No, all he gets is a free baseball. Yeah. He gets part of that 11.7 .7 scholarship. If he hangs around long enough after the game, McCarthy will sign it for him, I guarantee you. One ball, two strikes to McCoy. Stays alive. I mean, we have seen some shots. There you go. Feel good about that. We have seen some shots out of this ballpark. That, I mean... That was one of the most impressive. You know what he's doing right now? He's walking in. He's saying, I wonder if anybody saw me do that. <laughs> he knows they did. McCoy walked and scored his last time up. Ran it in on him. Wildcats with two sweeps this year and a series win at Missouri. Which well could have been a sweep. Lost that one three to two. Trying to get a victory here in the series opener. He's one of the best teams in the country. Two balls, two strikes. Wind blowing out even more now to right field. Now it's full. McCoy trying to battle back after falling behind one ball, two strikes. Shift is on. And McCoy in a manner of speaking, beats the shift by drawing the walk, but again came down or was down one ball, two strikes and came back. You and I have talked so often about this and any guy, anybody who follows baseball knows in the second, Lopez leads off getting hit by a pitch and scores. Then in the fifth, a walk to Nicholson, he scores. This inning, a walk to Daly, he scores. Leading off the inning. Like I said, that's how rallies are born. But they've been able to take advantage of all of that. Absolutely. Each time. Now Grant Smith. And had a lot of break on it, but broke around the plate. I'll tell you, after seeing his breaking ball, I would think that these guys, these hitters for Kentucky, are happy to see anybody else <laughs> but him. He's had a productive night with that RBI double and a run scored. Last time up, he just dumped it down the right field line. And a really good at bat. Was not a bad pitch that he hit. But he kept that head in, punched it. You know, one of the things Rob Vaughn told us about his team, he said, we have given away too many bases and too many runs, too many extra outs. That's what's happened tonight. Good stop by oh. Gassetti. Has walked three in the fifth inning. Two of them came in to score. Doug mentioned the two leadoff batters who got what they call takeits. Mm. So that's four batters who essentially got free passes came around. Came around to score. That's right. Cats with only five base hits but six runs. That's exactly right. Good pitch by 
But you have to do something with that. You know, a lot of times you get those kind of gifts and you're not able to take advantage of it. I think one of the things that this team has done so far this year is they've been able to do that. You know, when you score like that, and Alabama does a lot of this, different people contributing, that does make for a happy team. Oh, yeah, it keeps everybody up and down the lineup happy. They're all contributing. But the bench is out of control. <laughs> and by that, there's another walk. So now they're at first and second. And you know, it really hit me watching them the other night about how much fun they're having. And you think back, we're playing a game. But too many times, once you get to the next level, a lot of that fun's taken away from you. Yeah. So I, I love seeing the enthusiasm. As long as you're pulling for your team, and that's what they do. They're not dogging other teams. They're pulling for their team. Now Grant Smith at first. Look at these guys. Coy, I mean, second error they are. This is the sideways sixth. <laughs> In the sixth inning, the Caps go on sideways. Nick Mangione talking to the media Monday ahead of what we thought would be the Louisville game. Somebody asked about the dugout. And the key word there is weird. They want everything to be weird. So they've got a, he went through the laundry list. They've achieved that. And he said in one inning, I'm not sure which he didn't know. <laughs> they imitate <laughs> him at the third base coaching box. He said, everything I do, they do. Oh, we got to get that. Now, is that Ryan, a certain inning or? I'm, he wasn't sure. Ryan Waldschmidt. He's got to feel like he owes Alabama. He has struck out twice and grounded out. Yep. But the Devin Burks pit stop is fascinating to me, and I haven't seen it yet. I'll tell you about that in a second. Good pitch on the inner edge. One ball, one strike. We, we've got our cameras on it. We'll try to catch it. And the guys and gals doing a great job here on this night outside. Oh. Grayson and Kennedy are on our center field cameras out in our farthest outpost, braving the cold. And we're sitting in here in this balmy weather. We got a window <laughs> open, but it's just. Oh, look at them working their hearts out. Doing a great job. Great job, girls. Can we get them some hot chocolate? Can you give me some hot chocolate? Come on now. Come on. You got a space heater at your feet. <laughs> I'm so soft. I just, I just, I just yeah, really. outed you. Nice going. <laughs> hey, I have one too. <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not ashamed of it at all. We had to, uh, we had to get either. those a few years ago. Yeah. Oh. Right field line and playable. It's going to be tough, though. How about that? Wow. Evan Slate covered some ground. Made a nice catch, and I'll tell you what, Will Hodo at first, he gave up on that, but he knew yeah. he wasn't going to get to it. I tell you, that's an outstanding oh, play because he had to come a long way for that ball. You're playing deep, wind's blowing out, but as soon as that ball's hit, he takes charge. He comes in there and then makes a sliding catch. That's an excellent outfield play. So now two outs and a huge, if that drops, this game's almost out of hand. But now Amelia and Petrie will try to keep things going for the Wildcats. They've scored two. Boy, that had some nice bend on it. The, the Devin Burks pit stop, he sits, and his teammates either take off his equipment for him or put it on <laughs> him, and he never makes a move. And they feed him water at the same time. Another good bender. A little backdoor slider. No balls, two strikes. Myers jumps ahead on a dangerous hitter. Petrie drew a walk his last time up. 0 for 2. Ranging to his left, Max Grant. And that'll do it. Wildcats leave two, but they score two. They came around to score Alabama's only run. And just like here, he opened the inning. But looks at an off-speed pitch for a strike. And that double of his was a no-doubter. Left center field alley. For a moment, I thought it might have been gone. Another fast 
them all in a shift now for Daly. Devin, look at him. He's saying something like 0 2 now. If you're the hitter, you're protecting whatever you can. If you're a pitcher, you don't want to give you anything too good on an 0 2 pitch. Try to go up and yep. in. A little too up, a little too. Yeah, good idea. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jammed him, and he fights it off to go the other way. Nice piece of hitting by Will Hodo to lead off the inning with a base hit and beat the shift. That's exactly right. That's exactly you take him. Right now, you're just up there protecting that plate. The ball's in. He's not going to get beat on the pitch. Does a good job of fighting it off the other way. You got to think that that's where Poozer wanted that pitch. It was a good pitch, yes. Yeah. So now Matt Cassetti, sack bunt and a fly ball. Florida native. Well, that sack bunt back in the fifth inning seemed like a long time ago, doesn't it? It sure does. At three hits in the Georgia series. There's a gapper. And now he's got a base hit against Kentucky and perhaps an RBI. That gets past Waldschmidt. That's going to be an RBI double for Gassetti, and Alabama fights back with a run in the top of the seventh. Second double of the night for the Crimson Tide. Hodo scoring from first. Oh, he stays right on this ball and drills it into the gap. Looked like a little breaking ball. Stayed over the plate a little. Action in the Kentucky bullpen. Now the number nine hitter, Max Grant. But he'll have to wait on a mound visit. From Dan Rosell, the Kentucky pitching coach. Think about the SEC baseball. You could be here in the sixth or seventh. After giving up five straight runs, and they have. Boosters faced only 26 batters. He struck out three. And another guy who came through the portal, Doug, after pitching well in the Colonial Athletic Association, really well. And here he is starting in the SEC on a Friday night. Mm -mm. Portals changed the whole look of college baseball. Like I said earlier, there's always been player movement. But to your point, I think it's amped up quite a bit because of the portal. But back in the day, Baseball players could transfer without sitting out, and they changed that rule. But then here comes the portal, and the carousel spins. One-two pitch. Are we seeing less freshmen in the lineups now? Yes, I would think so. Grant Smith, one out. You know, that's something that is really, some coaches have told me about this. They have freshmen been affected really more than anybody with all this portal movement because obviously if you can get a guy who's already performed at the D1 level, you'll spend a scholarship or half a scholarship, whatever, on that guy as opposed to the freshman. I think Kentucky with five true freshmen. Well, you could get a commitment from a freshman, then him get drafted, then you don't true. get him at all. Top of the order, Gage Miller. 0 for 2, hit by a pitch to begin the game. Average has dropped Doug from 450 down to 442. <laughs> That's all. Well, so far he's pitched him pretty tough. Boy, he looks like he's got a short, compact swing. That's a big reason he's got 50 yeah. hits and 50 runs, you see, leading the SEC. Mm. A little turtleneck on and was it? 40-something degrees, he's out here. Short sleeves, tough. It's like a football game where 
it's bitterly cold, and during pregame warm-ups, linemen are out there without the sleeves. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Age of Pennsylvania native. Eight doubles, a couple of triples, and 13 home runs. That's your leadoff man, folks, who leads you in home runs. Those 50 runs lead the league and the nation. Right at Petrie. And there are two outs. I think Petrie might have thought that was three. <laughs> I think he started to head for the dugout. That's two. But a dangerous hitter goes down. He'll be reminded of that. Yep. Runner moves up. Could be the dugout captain. If that's true, what happened? Ryan Hagenau is the dugout captain. T.J. McCants trying to keep the inning alive. Oh, good. Off, so looked like off speed that time. Turned one over on him. T.J. singled his last time up. Struck out in a fly ball. They shift him to the right. Grant Smith right up the middle. Now we talked earlier about the dugout, and Hagenau is the official dugout captain. He makes sure everybody's involved and engaged. And now, was he appointed, or did they? How did he get that Nick responsibility? Nick asked for a volunteer, and he volunteered. I got you. And one of the reasons he's been able to kind of build his rep is, quite frankly, he's been injured since early in the year. He's an outstanding relief pitcher, trying to work his way back. Fell behind, came with a fastball. Now it's 3 1. Dangerous count to TJ McCants. Two outs here in the top of the seventh to run in. Boy, just an easy motion for 91 miles an hour. Full count. What a wow. stop by Nicholson. Takes an RBI conference has become a college baseball. Devin Burks leads things off. Last time up, a two-run single sent it right back up the middle. That was the big blow in the five-run or the three-run fifth inning for the Wildcats. Meyer still on the bump for Alabama. Important, obviously, for him to go as long as he can and save the rest of the Bama bullpen. That had some run on it. Yep. Tried to go back to the outside corner. Not sure if Devin got the pit stop treatment prior to his at bat. <laughs> Once again, that had all kinds of movement on it, just down and away. Well, if you were with us at the start of the game, it had just stopped raining. And the weather has behaved itself for the most part since. Oh, we're going to be wonderful the next couple of days. Yep. Boy, Devin just yeah. caught up with that one. One ball, two strikes. He's been going away, away. Trying to come back in on him. Good look at the beautiful ballpark here. I tell you, that comes across really nice on oh, yeah. television. And what a great crowd, weather considered. Yeah. A lot of people in the concourse you can't really see. Devin battling. So is Myers. A lot of folks began this game under the overhang because of the slight drizzle. Some Alabama fans here as well. Good weekend to take in baseball and Keeneland. 
Jammed him with a breaking ball. Yeah, yeah Keeneland today, I'm pretty sure they probably had a decent crowd. Bluegrass stakes tomorrow. Yeah, the, hmm. Hit hard, but not deep enough. McCants hauls it in. One out. Works with a long at bat. He battled, like I said. Gets way to Nick Lopez. We talked about the chilly temperatures here in the mid 40s. You know who likes that weather? Penguins. Horses. horses. But you're right, penguins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the horses, they, of course, they're up early in the morning running out there when the weather's still a little cool. But Just like you. Just like me. Now, switch hitter Nick Lopez. Now, horses like this snippy weather. Keeneland was the place to be. I come home in the off season. That's where I go say hello to everybody. They'd be at the track. That's going to say you could find them there. Find them there. It's been a frustrating night for the last couple of at bats for Lopez. He was hit by a pitch. Really, I think the first pitch he saw tonight came around and scored, but since then a strikeout and a pop fly. Got all of that one, but not deep enough. No. Squared it up. Well, sounded funny. It did, yeah. Into the bat. Maybe in the bat, yep. Yeah. So when you get all of it, but it's on the end of the bat, <laughs> it's, it's not that much. It's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, when you say you get all of it, it's going over that scoreboard or, or McCarthy, like McCarthy That's just hit. That's true, yeah. All of it off the end now, of the bat is not much. When I was hitting, they say he got all of it. That means they got every bit of my kitchen in there <laughs> beating up my knuckles. Now a timeout for Kentucky with two out, nobody on. And Daly and what they call, who they call Coach Ammo, Nick Amorati. Talk a little strategy. You know, here's a guy who's been on three times. I think just do what you're doing. A couple of knocks and a walk. And an RBI. And shown some good play over there at third base, too. There's a, there's a video you can take home. Mitchell listing Madison, Alabama as his hometown. Actually born in Fort Hood, Texas. And as he often does, advertises bunt on the first pitch. And now Gage Miller creeping in at third. You know, other than that last tremendous play by Ryan Nicholson, the pitchers have been so good that their defense hasn't had to do anything spectacular other than make the routine play. Yep. A couple of nice catches in the outfield by Alabama. And a nice pitch there by Myers. Petrus made a nice catch out in left field. Sliding catch in right by Evan Slight. There's the end. Just got enough to stay alive. Daly with a stolen base tonight. Scoreboard gives him credit for two, but had one taken away. A musical interlude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Throws wow. him. Took a little something off, and boy, it had some sink, too. We'll go to the eighth. 6-2 hit so well last year down the stretch. And that's why they had no hesitation in starting him as the Friday pitcher. And, you know, we look back on the Louisville game of last year, which the Wildcats actually lost 7 nothing here in Lexington. But that was more about the bullpen not able to get the job done. Travis Smith was absolutely electric in that game. I mean, when you're throwing 94, 93, 94 mile an hour, and you got a good breaking ball like that, it's just being able to harness it and throw it on command. 
And his ball moves all over the place, too. And Petrutz laces it to right. McCoy's got to play it off the fence. And a strong throw by James. Safe. That gives you an idea of the strength of the McCoy arm. But again, the leadoff man reaches for the fourth consecutive inning. Yeah, boy, just a fastball in. He pulls those hands in. And, man, I mean, hits a laser off the wall out and right. The ball didn't lack much going out of the ballpark. And to his credit, never slowed down. Ooh. Didn't take that hand off. It was exchanging from feet to hand. We have seen that happen already tonight. Slight. Chased down by Petrie. The running throw and a nice pickup by Nicholson. Runner does move up, one out. So Slight gets the job done. And hitting the ball to the right side of the infield. So an RBI opportunity for Justin LeBron. Grounded to third his last time up. One for three with a single. Well, that's a break for the Wildcats. Wow. Yeah. That hit the backstop so hard that Petrutz had to stay put. Hey, you got to be sure. Boy starts to come, and then the ball. Uh, that was going to be close, I believe. Yeah, but you don't gamble when you're Can't down. Can't gamble, no. Not with, yeah. no. Boy, how, how good is this kid at the plate? Rob Vaughn says he'll be the face of the program. Nice stop by Burks. Wow. Well, that's a but pretty that, high praise. I was going to say that is high praise indeed. Well, why not? You know, this year you look at Alabama, of course, football speaks for itself. Basketball in the Final Four, yeah. baseball ranked in the top 25. You got more guys like this. He's only hitting 353. Mm. See, there's that. Good fastball right there with a lot of movement on it. 96. One ball, two strikes. LeBron just wants to make contact. The infield is deep. Burks gets the assist. Strikeout for Smith. Two out and a big out for the man on third. Dangerous bat, but I keep saying that about the Alabama lineup up and down. Yeah. So now to DH, Cade Snell. 0 for 3 tonight. Came in batting 359 and making his 10th start. Starts him off with a breaking ball. Grant Smith going through a lot of gyrations there, trying to stay warm. Bouncing up, keep those legs loose. Big hop for Petrie. And the Crimson Tide works him into third, but that's where he remains. Bottom of the eighth coming up, 6-2 Kentucky on the SEC Network. Had made a barehanded catch out there wow. beyond the bullpen. I'm glad he did. He saved my pickup truck. Thank you very much. That might be the longest measured home run this year. I can tell you, Ryan Nicholson hit a home run to right field a couple of weeks ago, Doug, that they said he hit it so far they couldn't measure it. Come on. They had no idea. They had no idea where it landed. It went so far. But that's okay because Ryan Nicholson's back at the plate. Takes ball one. Meyer's still on the mound. He gave up the home run to McCarthy, walked a couple of men, but he's retired five straight. Walks have been a problem for Alabama pitchers tonight. And Nicholson's on. Second Wildcat to wear one tonight. And the mantra for many, many years here has been, we don't move. And that's problem. carried over with whoever comes in Absolutely. here, too. I 
was going to say that was a problem that year or two. They did silly rule about whether or not somebody tried to get out of the way, oh, yeah. even if you were standing in a batter's box. Oh. One of the worst rules in the history of college baseball. Well, they teach the kids to turn their shoulder in so that the ball didn't hit you on your arm. So you can try to get it hit on your back or where the muscle part is. And they were saying guys were leaning over the plate. Uh. McCarthy absolutely jams the plate. I mean, he is right there on the edge. So you try to run it in on him. You make a mistake, you'll see him park one, but he's looking to bunt perhaps. And it goes one ball, one strike. And that was clearly what happened, Doug, on his home run. Myers tried to run it up and in and made a mistake. And now McCarthy backs off the plate a little bit. We get a good look at just how he's spread out and And hit a breaking ball, and he might not get a breaking ball this time after the way he hit that last one. Well, he just swung and missed it one. So now it's one ball, two strikes. Big hop from Miller, fair ball. One out. Nicholson now at second, man in scoring position. Nolan thought that ball was foul. You think he snuck a peek? Yeah, I think he snuck a peek there. It just, because uh, the way it started out, it looked like it might be going foul, but either way, he gets the runner over. Now James McCoy. Productive night, 0 for 1, but a pair of walks and a run scored. James, three home runs, has that average up now. The 298, he started the night at 304, but I say up because making his 13 start took him a little while to get on track offensively. It was early on, like Doug said, Nick Mengione was toying with his lineup, and James was in and out of the lineup. He was having trouble last year. I think the game was a little quick for him. He was striking out a lot. Now he's cut the strikeouts down. He's hit some with power, both sides of the plate. Woo, big swing. Did not get cheated. And of course, he's played an outstanding outfield ever since he's been around. And a few trips to the mound this year. And not just as a mop-up man. Two balls, one strike. Well, there's movement on that pitch for Myers. And might be sharper now than it was when he first came in the ball game. Well, he's done a nice bounce back after giving up that home run. And the walks. And the walks, yeah. Two balls, or rather three balls and two strikes. Talked a lot about the bullpen, or rather the uh, dugout tonight for the Wildcats. And when it was a red shirt a couple of years ago, McCoy basically sat out the season. He was the man who orchestrated the action in the Kentucky dugout. A little bit of choreography here and there. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Again, the 3 2. Slider didn't slide enough. That's the third walk issued by Myers. And after retiring five straight, he has hit a man and walked a man. Sandwiched around a ground ball. So now, first and second with one out for Grant Smith. One for two with an RBI double and a run scored. He drew a walk back in the sixth inning and was stranded. Well, you look back on that sixth inning and the catch Evan Slight made in right field. Oh, yeah. I mean, this game could have been out of hand if he doesn't make that catch. But right now it's 6-2. Yep, you win.
Ben Hess on the hook for Alabama. Hess charged with five of the six runs. Struck out nine Wildcats. At one point, he struck out five straight. Did not give up a hit until the fourth inning. Beg your pardon, two hits through the fourth. And they never really squared him up. No. Well, Devin Burks. Burks had the RBI single. Yeah, hit that ball right on the button. Grant Smith's double, as we said, just a bloop down the line. Still counts. One, two. Oh. Got that corner. Strike at number two for Myers. Two outs now for the top of the order. Ryan Walshman. And Alabama's done a great job of keeping him off the bases. He originated that short fly ball to right that was taken away from him. The catch by Slight. Two strikeouts and a ground ball, 0 for 4. Got under it. Is it deep enough? Doesn't look like it. McCants camping. That'll do it. Oh, well, the Wildcats put two men on, but they home runs. Will Hodo's done some damage tonight. Two for three. A single, a double, two runs scored. Good off speed pitch. Now Daly makes the trick. Out into short right field. Oboe from Waynesboro, Mississippi. There's Nicholson and he can't make the play. First error of the night by either team. Wildcats got what they wanted, but once again, the leadoff man reaches here in the ninth inning. I'm not sure what happened on that. Ball's hit sharply, but Oh, he just he goes down on his knee and uh, ball just scoots and doesn't bounce up as high. Just scoots. It goes right off his shin. So, yeah, that's one I'm sure he'd like to have back. Fifth consecutive inning that Alabama's put the leadoff man aboard. So Max, Max Cassetti will try to move him up. RBI double his last time up. Neither team has turned to double play tonight. Would be a bad time to have one. Grant Ooh, Smith. Take it yourself. He'll take it himself. Safe. Yeah, that little hesitation. Made a nice pickup. He's got to know that with the left-handed hitter, that second baseman's going to be a little far away from him. So that's, that's not like Grant to make that kind of uh, little hesitation there. Ball's hit right. He's got plenty of time. Now just run to the bag. Good strong throw. Yeah, he actually hit the bag and then took an extra step. You want to try to hit that bag with your lead foot as you're throwing. And... But that's, you say a ball's hit on the button. They got one out. That is not a good sound. That's not a jet engine coming in. There you go. We know it's under review. Can you get the signal? <laughs> we know it's under review. <laughs> just just take the rest of the playoff. <laughs> Kentucky is challenging the call at first base. The call at first base is safe. And our replay looks like he was safe, but you never know. You can see that Petrie Doug looked like he believed. Yeah. He's there. After further review, the call at first base is confirmed. Yeah. Kentucky has one challenge remaining. It did look like Petrie had faith in Smith that he would come across the bag to make yeah. the play. 
Well, I thought just because of the position where he caught sure. it yeah. and with Petrie being over a little bit poolside. And is that something that may have already talked about? Well, you, you just know. It's an instinct thing. I mean, you're, the ball's hit right at you, and you just you know I got plenty of time. But he hesitated a little bit. And like you said, a left-handed hitter. So now Max Grant will try to take advantage. One out here in the ninth inning. Pitch by Smith, 94 on the corner. I hate beating up on my shortstop like that because he's <laughs> so good. Yeah. But every now and then, little things like that. That's an opportunity to learn. Yeah. Bottom fell out of that one. One ball, two strikes. Well, you've said it many times that Grant Smith dominates the routine play, and that's yeah. where it all begins. Wow. Just nasty, nasty, and nastier. Two out. But the top of the order strides to the plate. And you know, all the stuff we've talked about is get a good idea of what kind of breaking ball did Travis Smith have. It's a dandy. I think the reason it makes these guys so good up the middle is they're not afraid to learn. They're not afraid to work, talk to each other, and, and uh, they embrace belly set chance to just get better and better and better. Starts Gage Miller off at a 96 mile an hour fastball for strike one. Gage 0 for 3 tonight. First pitch of the game hit him. But he was stranded at first. One of seven left on by the tie. Came back with another fastball. Gage from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Transferred in from Bishop State Community College. A junior. Off the fists. Easy play to second. And that'll do it. The Wildcats take game number one. They break open a tight one with three in the fifth, two in the sixth. Bullpen does the job. And Kentucky tomorrow will play Fucking up for They all hear me take the ball, draw the cell phones The one that put me away to call for Here we go, let me paint the scene In the legal world where they intervene Lawyers, they hustle, they grind every day Seeking justice in every single way They study hard, yeah, they hit the books Mastering the art of legal hooks From criminal law to civil rights they're the warriors in legal fights Lawyers, they're the voice that I'll press Fighting for justice, they never rest In the courtroom, they make the stand Defending the rights of every woman and man Objection, your honor, they shout with pride As they defend the truth, they won't hide Cross-examining witnesses, seeking the facts With determination, they always act From the prosecution to the defense they navigate the legal sense Building cases brick by brick Their dedication, it's so thick Lawyers, they're the voice that I'll press Fighting for justice, they never rest In the courtroom, they make the stand Defending the rights of every woman and man But it's not just about the fame and glory It's about upholding the law's true story With integrity and honor, they proceed Guided by justice, fueled by the need So here's to the lawyers, the legal knights Standing up for what's right, shining bright In the halls of justice, they'll always be 
Defenders of truth, champions, you see.